I used to see people DJ and I was like, that's so cool. I'd really yeah. like to do that. So A level was when I started really taking an interest in wanting to be a DJ. And after I finished my A's, yeah. my mom had a DJ friend. So I, I always used to mention it like, I want to learn how to DJ, I want to learn how to DJ. So she took me to one of her friends, uh, yeah. DJ Robbie T. He was a DJ and he taught me. So this was like A break, end of 2016 into 2017. Yeah. That's when I learned how to be a DJ. Ooh, that's cool though. Yeah. That sounds so cool. So it's, it's fun. <laughs> so were you like actually shadowing him at gigs or you were like going, like how was that working? That um, he used to play at Pariah Pomona. Yeah. So every Saturday I'd go through, I'd watch him. In the beginning I'd watch him. So he, I'd watch him and then I'd go home and practice on my laptop. Come back next week and then he'd give me like 15 minute set moved on to a 30 minute set, then he'd give me an hour and then we'd be doing gigs together after that. Yeah. Yeah. Or oh, like a 15 minute set like with the people. Yes, like, the with the people there, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so I used to get so nervous in the beginning because I'm like, I'm gonna, I hope I don't mess up. Yeah, but I eventually, <laughs> I settled in. <laughs> Like, I'm, Yo, I don't know what I'm doing. That's crazy. That's, yeah. Did you ever, though, like, make, like, those crazy mistakes where you're just like, oh, man, the urge yes. to swallow me? Yes, but I think that's how we learn. Yeah. Because you do something wrong, and then you know, I should not do this. That's how you learn. <laughs> I get so embarrassed, but then he always used to say, just move on, move on from it. Yeah, keep You made the mistake, it's made already. You can't fix that. Yeah. Just do better. Yeah, yeah do better yeah, next time yeah, as well. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's interesting. And so... In terms of education, mm -hmm. um, one of the things you actually went on to do is become like a qualified sound engineer. Yes. That's right, right? Yes, yes. Okay. And so, what motivated you to go like after that certification, given that uh, I think you graduated last year or the year before? Yeah, and year before. You were already like working, you had been working for a minute. Yes. I then wonder like what motivated you to actually get that like a formal education because yeah sometimes the whole point is to get education so you get an opportunity, opportunity yeah. but i was really working yeah okay for me with sound engineering i remember when i was finishing high school i didn't know what exactly i wanted to do i just knew i wanted to be in the music industry yeah so sound engineering initially was for me to be able to record myself in studio as a rapper and then in the course, I learned the live sound side as well, yeah. which then helped me because sometimes as DJs, you get, to a sh you get to a show, they set up everything, but the sound is so whack. And if you don't have the education, if you don't have the knowledge, you're just going to play. And people usually blame the person on the stage. Yeah, they don't know that you're not the one. Exactly. Who the I'm not the one who brought the speakers or, and yeah. set them up. But Ooh. At the end of the day, it's my name. So I was <laughs> yeah. like, you know what? Kill two birds with one stone. Let me just learn how to do it. So that if I get to a place, sound check, sound is whack, I can at least tell you the can, engineer, yeah. yo, can you fix this, fix that? Or I can do it myself. Yeah, you can compensate and, yeah. for those like, deficiencies. Exactly. On, exactly. On, on the ground. So yeah. And so when it comes to stuff like, uh, like that, uh, mm -hmm. the, the sound engineering itself, um, yeah. What are they teaching you? You talked about, of course, that your intention going in was to be able to actually record your own music. I'm assuming mm -hmm. there's like mastering and mixing yes, in there. Mixing, mastering. And then the live sound aspect. Yes. Is there anything else that's like quite, that stands out where you're like, yeah, this was definitely something that I wouldn't have gotten if I hadn't gotten uh, that. For me, mostly it was my ear. I have a better ear now in terms of music. Listening to songs. Yeah. Even when I'm playing, I can hear certain elements that are missing. Like you can be playing a song yeah. and then something just maybe switches off and you can hear, okay, this is what happened. And you can, you understand now, not, yeah. you won't be wondering like, what's going on? Yeah. <laughs> Why is the sound, song sounding funny? Yeah. But now you know that, okay, if this happens, this is what I need to fix. So I have a better ear musically. Yeah. Even that, like when sounds... listening to songs, I know I can listen to a song and pick up that this song will mix in very well with this song. Yeah. So it, ah, okay. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah, fair yeah, enough. Yeah, yeah. Is that like, and this is the novice in me speaking, but is yeah. that like stuff like tempo? Is that like... tempo, even musical elements? You can hear certain guitar in one song and pick up 
a similar guitar in another song, oh, and stuff that, like that. That yeah. transition. And then, yeah, well they'll mix well together. The songs will mix well together and give you a better set. Fair enough. Yeah. Fair enough. Fair mm -hmm. enough. Sounds like a cheat code. Sounds yes, like a cheat code. <laughs> it was. <laughs> <laughs> and so, like you said before, you're going into like um, your sixth year as a DJ. Yes. One of the things that always um, fascinates me about any sort of like creative craft is how do you um, stay not necessarily ahead of the curve, but mm -hmm. like how do you break monotony? Because, uh, and this is even interesting as DJs mm -hmm. because a lot of times I hear people, I'm not like a turn up person, right? Uh -huh. So I don't get to experience a lot of these sets myself. Yeah. But sometimes you can hear people complain, with the, uh, the variety among DJs, it almost yeah. feels the same and it's stuff like vibes, that. The same vibes, the same songs, the same music. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so it's like, how do you like innovate within that space where you, you're getting, yeah, it's past half a decade. Yeah. How do you stay like innovative? I think for me, just be yourself. Try to be original. Like, you can have certain vibes or certain songs that people like but yeah. also bring something to the table we have this discussion as djs as well yeah like with the guys i work with bring new music to the table a lot of people may not be welcoming to it but the more we as djs play music that no one else has heard the more yeah. people open up to it and the more people expect it yeah. so people get tired of hearing the same songs all the time and expect <laughs> you to play something new like, I think the greatest thing as a DJ is when you're playing and people pull out their phones to Shazam songs. And they're like, yo, I need this. I need to, what is this what song? Is like, this? literally <laughs> on two days ago, yeah. I was out with my friends and then one of my friends heard a song that one of the DJs was playing and was like, no, I need to Shazam this. What's the name of the song? Yeah, you know, yeah. that sort of thing. I think that's what brings, that's what breaks monotony. Yeah. 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 Bring that new vibe. And also, we can't play the same genres as DJs, guys, please. <laughs> every, like right now, for the past two years, every DJ wants to play on my piano. Oh, like, I, it's, it's great so that much, you're the one who said exactly. it and not me. <laughs> there's so much more music out there. Like, I really try a lot, depending on the time slot I get. Yeah. But most of the time, I'm not playing on my piano. I'll play Afro House hip-hop, old school, yeah. dance hall, but like... Anything but. <laughs> yes, anything but. Not that I don't like, I love my piano. I think the music is great. Everyone is playing it. So it's interesting that you, you touched on I'm a piano because that's a thing I sometimes hear people complaining about, but another mm -hmm. I hear uh, things uh, people complain about is uh, DJs don't play Zim music. Um, so I'm going to ask you like a two-prong question. Yes. One, is that true? <laughs> <laughs> I'll and say if it's true, um, why? I'll say it's not true. Yeah. Because a lot of us actually play. We might not play a full Zim music set for an yeah. hour, but we do put Zim music in our sets. Like yeah. a lot of us. I don't think I've heard a DJ playing without playing Zim music. Yeah. In a very long time. So why is it like people, is, why do people have that conception? Because they want certain artists to be played. Okay, so I Zim music they are playing, but not Yandula Kuntz. Exactly. Because if I have a song that you did, yeah. and I think it fits perfectly in my set, I'm going to play it. That's Zim music. Yeah. But because you don't know it, as a person who's it listening to yeah, it, it doesn't register that that's Zim music. So like with me, I have a lot of artist friends. I always play their music, but some people may not know those people. And, and then they'll be it like, doesn't ah, click. this one doesn't play music. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't click. Yeah. <laughs> DJ, I need self hate. I need self hate. My haters. Fair enough, fair enough. Because, so the reason why um, I, I actually asked if it's true is because for a long time I also had that conception and mm -hmm. then. I was testing it out in December because I was going out a bit more because naturally yeah. people go out in December. Exactly. Right? Like yeah. even us people who do not turn out is. one or two places. Uh -huh. And I was being like more intentional and I actually did hear like a lot of uh, Zim, Zim music. music yes. so like, and it's changed over the years. People have actually warmed up to our own music. I remember yeah. like six years ago, people didn't really care about Zim music. No one wanted to hear that. No one wanted to hear that. Especially if it wasn't Zim Dance Wall. There is that. Yes. There is that. If it was not Zim Dance Wall, don't play it. That's how people felt. 
yeah. but now people have opened up to even R&B, Zim House, Afro, yeah. like a Zim lot. Zim hip hop as well. Zim hip hop yeah. as well, exactly. So does the conundrum become good as a DJ, right? Uh -huh. If you don't play something that's hype, you also have something to lose, right? Because a lot of if people, it's like a live sound, a lot of DJs feel that way. Good, at the end yeah. of the day, the vibe is <laughs> just supposed to be great, right? Exactly. Like, regardless of how many experiments you put in, how many new things you're bringing. Yeah. But I think that's why I I appreciate having gotten the opportunity to be an opening DJ. Yeah. Because when you're opening, it's not about hyping the crowd. It's about you enjoying yeah. yourself. Yeah. I enjoy myself. I play yeah. whatever I want. <laughs> <laughs> so today, if I feel like I want to play this, I'm going to play it. And people actually appreciate that because I play music that people don't hear often. Yeah. And afterwards, we're like, yo, that's a good set. That was a good set. There's less people, pressure, yeah. I suppose. Yeah, there's less pressure. Yeah, because I remember there's listening pressure, to There's less pressure to please the crowd. Yeah. I remember yeah. listening to your set uh, at, at, at Kabiro's show yeah. in 2021, late mm -hmm. 2021. Yeah. And yeah, it was like, yeah, no yeah. one's dancing yeah. there. People yeah. are just like, getting a show. People are getting in. Show, like. Yeah, so you're just, we call it marinating the crowd. Yeah. Yeah. And that's like, I feel like that's the best time to play as a DJ. Because you do what you want. Yes. You do what Fair you enough. want. But yeah. the thing with me is, people end up just dancing. Yeah. Because if, if you've got it, you've got it. Yeah. People end up getting hyped and start dancing and stuff. So it's 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 dope. But a lot of DJs just want to hype the crowd. They want to be. I suppose that's where the <laughs> monotony and repeated yeah. sets and whatnot yeah. comes so in. So you find there's not a weekend that will go by without you hearing songs like Izolo. And Adiwele, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It doesn't matter who the DJ is, you're guaranteed at some point, at some point you're going to hear those songs. Yeah. And it's. Yeah. It becomes. I suppose, fair enough. I, yeah. yeah, I suppose. Does it work though? Yeah, you would, you would know better. Does it work though? It works. It works because people get lit. <laughs> so, fair enough. <laughs> I mean, it's the entertainment scene. People be drinking. Yeah. By the time people are lit, they don't really care. They just want to have fun. Yeah. So yeah. It's not that to easy. some extent, it works. Yeah. But also, when you then hear DJs that play music that no one else is playing, people like Ryan Sint, Langton B, they always play songs that people don't know. But you still find the crowd hyped. Yeah. Yeah. People will be like, Aish, what's that? <laughs> <You know? laughs> or or you're mixing that is, yeah. songs that we know in like a, with like a different beat. Oh, I don't yeah, know, I yeah. Don't know what you get like called. acapellas from one song and then yeah. the beat from another song. People like that who are creative really inspire me because it's like you're doing something different. You're not yeah. doing the same thing over and Sorry, over. Sorry, it doesn't feel like a playlist. Exactly. It doesn't <laughs> feel like. <laughs> I feel like sometimes the trap with DJs is. You've got that one feel playlist. Like a playlist. Yes. You've got that one playlist. We know <laughs> after this song, they're actually DJs like that. We know that after this song, you're going to play this song. Yeah. But there's, it, I think it also comes with comfort. A lot of DJs get lazy to actually sit down and be like, okay, I've got a show on Saturday. Yeah. Let me put a playlist together. Something different. For Not what I usually show. Exactly, exactly. For this specific show. A lot of DJs will have that one playlist that they play Monday to Monday, yeah. wherever they go, wherever they play. <laughs> Monday to Monday is the same songs back to back. You know, you know that after this song, this song is this definitely is coming, coming on. And win. at this point, it gets to a point where you know, at this point, that's where he's gonna start mixing this song, or that's where she's gonna start mixing the song. <laughs> it's crazy. DJ in a club, DJ at my wedding. Mm -hmm. DJing on radio all require, I suppose, different things. Especially radio versus yeah. uh, club. I'd say club. Yeah. Um, what are some of those differences in terms of like just approach and execution do you like experience? Radio for me was different in that you don't know who you're playing for. You're playing, you know people are listening. Yeah. But you can't see them. We do have, like now it's easier because people can text in on WhatsApp, yeah. Instagram, Twitter, but 
you still don't know you don't see these faces you don't see how it's they're enjoying personal. yeah so it's mm. more of enjoying myself i just have to make sure i'm hyped because yeah. if i'm hyped i know someone else out there you is hope hyped. you connect but with someone. if i'm boring myself then i know i'm boring everyone else they may not be there to tell me yeah but i know that that's their reaction yeah so that i wouldn't say uncertainty but it's just you don't really know. The feedback is different. Yeah, the feedback, the feedback is, different. is different from like a Because if it doesn't hour. come, if people don't text you or yeah. call in or send messages on Instagram or Twitter, then you don't know. But playing in like a club or somewhere, outdoor events and stuff like that, you, you can, can actually see people dancing. People will come up moment. to you and be like, yo, you're really rocking it and stuff like that. But with radio, it's just you. <laughs> <laughs> it's yeah. just you. Yeah. Yeah, I hear yeah, that. I hear yeah. that. Did you like? Do you have a favorite in terms of those settings, like radio, weddings, live events, whatever? Do I have a favorite? Oh, kubasa, kubasa. <laughs> kubasa, kubasa. But I think they bring. They both give like separating radio from like being elsewhere. Yeah. They bring different things to the table for me. Yeah. So I can't really say I prefer radio over this because it's different elements for me. Yeah. But at the end of the day, I'm still enjoying myself. I so hear that. Work is work. Fair enough. Work I, is work. I, so I, I still have fun. In, in Wherever I'm playing, yeah. I'd make sure, yo, this is it's me. Turned. This is my time. Let's get turned. I hear that. Let's get turned. I hear yeah. that. And so you've been in the industry for half a decade. Yes. Keep coming back to that, right? Mm -hmm. um, that's long enough to have like uh, seen things that DJs in Zim in general like mm -hmm. have challenges with. What yes. are some of those things in your experience so far? The main one is money. Like what? Like people don't pay <laughs> people enough. People don't or what? pay enough. People don't want to pay enough. And the biggest thing is with so many of us. If I come to you. No, if you come to me and say I want to hire you for my event, blah, 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 yeah. and I tell you, yo, give me 150, yeah. and then you tell me, no, I don't have that, I can only give you 50 bucks. If I say no, I know you're gonna go to the next DJ. Someone else is gonna say yes. And that next DJ is gonna say, yo, 50 is fine, bro, <laughs> give me that. <laughs> yeah. So people don't really wanna pay enough because they know they can get cheaper somewhere else. They can yeah. get a cheaper DJ. So even. For females especially, because guys, a lot of promoters look at females like, ah, she's a female, you know. And there's this perception that Anu Chengeto, she's probably got her ah, man who takes care of yeah, So what so does she need is, the money yeah, for? This, this is, is just like a, a, side a side thing, you know. It's not that deep. Yeah, it's not that deep. But bro, <laughs> I have bills. <laughs> yeah. I'm a grown person. Yeah. I have bills. I may not be taking care of myself fully, but at the end of the day, I still need money to take care of myself. Yeah. I need yeah. to be independent. Yeah. This is work for me. So getting people to understand that, you need to, we had to learn to protect ourselves. Yeah. Say no to gigs that put disrespect on your name. Say no to people that don't want to pay you enough. Even if it means you're losing out on that gig, but you still keep your yeah. self-respect. Yeah. You still, you know, honor yourself knowing that I'm not going to go play for six hours just to get 50 bucks. It doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. It doesn't yeah. make sense at the end of the day. Because <laughs> people underestimate the work that goes into standing in front of a car, uh, in front of a crowd, yeah. staying hyped for like three to six hours. Just there. <laughs> I'm not just standing, I'm mixing, I'm thinking, I'm dancing, I'm yeah. hyping up the crowd. It's work. And then you want to give me fifty dollars at the end of the yeah. day? Yo, make it no. make sense. Yeah, because yeah. if yeah. if you do like four of those, that's like two hundred bucks a month, and you're like, yeah, like how do yeah. I survive? Exactly. <laughs> if I was to think about rent, like, bro, yeah, rent, food, yeah. Yeah. transport, transport, <laughs> and that's the thing. Um, people also don't understand if I'm coming to your gig, because of my equipment, I'm gonna. I don't drive, so I have to get a cab. If I come to your event and the money you're giving me is basically covering my camp, <laughs> yeah, then what's the point? Money. Exactly. What's the point? What's the point? 
Because we're, we're beyond this thing of exposure, we're beyond of, ah, no, come, you know, you grow your bread. I want to grow my see you. Someone <laughs> will see you. Maybe you'll get another gig. Yes, I want to grow my brand. I want to get more gigs. I want to meet new people. But at the end of the day, respect me. It's my work. It's my job. Yeah. I may have fun doing it. It's not my fault. My job is fun. Yeah, but respect but... me enough to pay me what I deserve. Yeah. So that's like the biggest challenge. And how do, you, how do you think we change that? Is, is it like, is it, is it an education thing? Is it like what? I remember last year, I think it was, when was it? Last year, should have been mid last year. Yeah. Cause DJ, we were like, there were a lot of interviews where DJs were being asked this question. And there was this um, post that came out with yeah. DJ fees. Because there are a lot, a lot of DJ groups as well. So it was being posted in DJ groups. If you're an amateur DJ, for a gig like this, you charge a certain amount for an hour, an hour, an hour. And if people followed that, if we yeah, all like came together standard. as an industry and had an industry standard, things would be okay. We'd be respected enough to get the money we deserve. Yeah. But the thing but is, who's going to be like, well, just online. give me how, however much you have. And that's where the downfall and is. Because yeah. I will come to you and charge you a certain amount of money, but you're going to get someone else who charge you like half or a third of what I want. 500, I want 50. 50, it's fine, you know. So yeah. that's like, it's, it's still a challenge, it's but the more DJs respect themselves, the more we're getting there, yeah. the closer we are. I the that. more I say no to certain gigs, the more people realize, okay, Shaku doesn't play like that. Yeah. We need to, you know, if we don't have the money, then we shouldn't approach her. Yeah. Basically. Yeah. Craft-wise, right? Because yes. you, you just mentioned that, like, it's a lot of work. It's, mm -hmm. to a degree, it's fitness, it's mentally taxing. Mm -hmm. uh, the choices you're making on the fly. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Choice of music, tempo, understanding Reading equipment. the crowd as well. Reading yeah. the crowd, mm -hmm. <laughs> mixing the sounds. Yeah. And just like a lot more, even like the business aspect that we're yeah. talking about. All mm -hmm. of this. A lot of moving parts, it seems. Um, which aspect would you say has been the most challenging for you to to grasp uh, yeah, since your career started? I think the hardest part was learning the actual craft, mixing itself yeah. in the beginning when I was learning. Because everything else after that comes naturally. You learn as you go, but like actually learning how to mix. Because yeah. when I learned how to mix, uh, Robbie T would have different mixes every day. Today he's got this controller. Next week he's got a two channel mixer. Next week he's got another controller. And you keep seeing things you've never seen before. So getting, trying to get used to all that. Because like a lot of DJs things? will get like their one controller and their laptop. And that's what they used to. They're DJs I know who will not play if they don't have their own equipment. Yeah. But with me, I had to learn different stuff. And it was like, it's not like today you're going to have this, next week you're going to have it and get used to it. And then you eventually, just no. Get there and you see what's there. Today it's, it's like... this, next week it's something else. But I think he used to do that so that I learned. Because now I can go anywhere. I can play with anyone's laptop, I can use anyone's controller. And, so, you're and I'll good still, to go. like. You can put your laptop there and I'll start playing. <laughs> as long as you've got the software, I'll make a plan. Yeah. And I learned how to do that. So that was the most difficult part, just grasping concept. But then after that, with practice, you learn how to pick songs, you learn how to read the crowd, you know what songs to play at a certain time. Yeah. You just learn as you go. It's, it, it, it tends to come out, it yeah. compounds. Yes. And then eventually you can do it in your sleep. The thing we actually talked about, uh, crowd control and whatnot, I actually believe that um, DJs are actually like performance artists, right? Yes. And you actually do have DJs that have brands that have become that. Right. Where yes. It's like, yo, yes. Yes. I need this DJ specifically mm -hmm. because, yeah. But yeah, um, with the name Shaku Shante, what's, Shaku Shante. what's, what's, How what's the story that behind that? <laughs> behind that name. Okay, so. I used to use Shante Mac. Yeah. My, yeah. Yes. Yes. <laughs> my actual name. Yeah. And then there's this period where my friends had these cool, catchy 
handles on Instagram. Yeah. <laughs> so I was like, I used to see them like, I want to have a catchy handle. I need me one of those. Exactly. And that, <laughs> at, at that time, that was when the Shaku Shaku dance was, you know, popular. Involved. So I'm like, Shaku Shante sounds, sounds kind of catchy. So I just changed my Instagram handle, Shaku Shante. And then people started calling me that. It's Everywhere cool. went, Shaku, Shaku Shante, Shaku Shaku. And I'm like, I tried to fight it for so long. So I'm like, no, that's not my stage name. My stage name Ms. is Shante Mag. You know, people are like, I'm It took a life of its own. I, I just had to give it, because everywhere I go, hey, yo, Shaku Shante is in the building. Hey, Shaku Shante, what's up? And I'm like, guys, okay, it's stuck. To be fair, I, I actually to, yeah. forgot him. Shante, Shante uh, Mac. Mac was yeah. a thing until you mentioned it. <laughs> I guess people love Shaku Shante that much. 